The hits keep coming for former President Donald Trump. On Friday, the ex-president and his family were hit with a devastating new legal judgment in the New York financial fraud case. Judge Arthur Engren has ruled that Trump, his eldest sons, and associates pay over $350 million in fines to the state of New York for intentionally committing financial fraud over the course of a decade. Not only that, but Engren has barred Trump and two other executives from serving as officers or directors of any corporation or entity in New York for a period of three years. His sons, Eric and Trump Jr., were banned for two years uh, while also continuing the appointment of an independent monitor and ordered the installation of an independent director of compliance for the company. So this is disastrous for the Trump organization, for Trump and his businesses, and a huge win for the New York Attorney General, Letitia James. Wow. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how his week's going. Uh, in his decision, Engren said the defendants, quote, fact and expert witnesses simply denied reality. And defendants failed to accept responsibility or to impose internal controls to prevent future reoccurrences. That is the least surprising sentence I've ever read. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, they denied reality. Yep. <laughs> and denied res taking responsibility. Whatever kind of personal responsibility. Uh, not for Trump. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> I mean. Can't let that happen. Not personal responsibility. Uh, now, that said, this actually could have went worse for Trump. You see, um, originally, Letitia James was looking for about $370 million and a lifetime ban on Trump doing business in the state of New York. Now, this is bad, uh, three years, but it's not a lifetime ban. So three years from now, Trump can start doing business again uh, in the state of New York. So not quite the corporate death penalty that they were looking for, but it's still real bad, all right? Uh, now, the $370 million, uh, which, again, this judgment came pretty close to, about $350 million, uh, was the amount that they said Trump had profited after lying about his net worth and receiving lower interest uh, rates from lenders that he had defrauded. So, look, uh, not as bad as, 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 again, we thought it could be, but still really bad. Now, this ruling was also a follow-up to a pretrial judgment Ingram had issued back in September based on documented evidence that Trump had engaged in fraud, okay, by misrepresenting net worth of his properties to lenders. Now, the trial was determined, uh, was held to determine whether Trump would actually just have to pay a fine. Um, prosecutors had to show Trump and other defendants, including Trump's adult sons and former Trump organization executives, Alan Weisselberg and Jeff McConney, had acted with the intent to defraud, which appears to have been the case. Trump's team tried to argue that the valuations were quote unquote worthless because they contained a clause saying that they were worthless. Oh, you see, uh, we wrote it right in there that the valuations were worthless. That means we're gonna, you know, uh, evaluate as high as possible <laughs> when we want to get a loan, you know, um, even though eh, they're not worth as much, but that's okay because we've already said that the valuations were worthless. Now that's an argument that the judge rejected because there, there are ways to determine the value of something. Uh, for example, you had outside appraisals that would appraise the properties. That's the whole point of an appraiser. And while the number isn't, actually, uh, you know, 100% like accurate. There's a bit of a range when it comes to appraisals of property and it's more of a, a, a judgment, right? That doesn't mean that you can make up your own valuations if you disagree with the appraisals, because look, I, I've, you know, I, I've had an, uh, an appraiser and I've disagreed with an appraiser before. It's like, you know, I think I do think it's a, my home is worth a little bit more uh, than that. And you can have your difference of opinion with appraisers, but generally you got to stay pretty close to what the appraisers say. You can't just be like, oh yes, Mar-a-Lago, the appraiser says it's only worth 18 million, but I think it's worth half a billion dollars. And so I'm just going to put that down on official documents 
uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, trying to borrow money. No, that's fraud. That's not going to fly. But his lawyers uh, argued that any discrepancies that were in their financial documents were not their fault, even though they had persisted for years and contradicted those outside appraisals the company had uh, received from appraisers. Uh, now, the trial was also actually supposed to have been decided by the end of January, but there were some delays, a couple of them. In fact, uh, on January 26th, former federal judge Barbara uh, had sent a letter to Engren detailing certain deficiencies in the Trump organization's financial reports. She had been serving as a court-appointed monitor overseeing the company's financial reporting since November of 2022. In her letter, uh, Jones said that there were disclosures that were either incomplete, present results inconsistency, uh, I'm sorry, inconsistently, and or contain errors. Errors, inconsistencies that were not fixed. They made no effort to fix those issues. Now, the other delay was from Alan Weisselberg, the Trump Organization's former CFO, who tried to negotiate a potential plea deal with the Manhattan DA. Now, Weisselberg reportedly considering pleading guilty to lying on the stand during the fraud trial uh, in exchange for not having to be a witness for Trump's separate hush money case, which is upcoming in March and could potentially be worse because it involves federal federal charges uh, of election interference. So falsifying documents uh, in the pursuit of committing another crime, which again, falsifying documents, business documents is a misdemeanor, but if it's in pursuit of a, of a higher crime, if you're doing it to cover your tracks, uh, it, I mean, that elevates it, especially to the federal level because it concerns the federal election. So deep trouble there, right? Uh, now, that said, we have this verdict. It's devastating, especially if you add it to the other judgments that have been uh, levied recently. The $83.3 million judgment, for example, awarded to E. Jean Carroll for Trump's repeated defamation of her character. Uh, and all that adds up. Trump's running out of money for his legal defense. According to Bloomberg News, just a couple of days ago, reporting that the former president is on pace to spend $26.6 million raised by an allied super PAC fund to fund his multiple legal battles by July. Trump, uh, the result would be that he likely will drain his war chest for legal fees by summer, July, leaving uh, his, the GOP front runner crunched for cash just as his presidential campaign ramps up spending. Bloomberg also notes that Trump's campaign spent 13.3, uh, I'm sorry, 13.6 million dollars more than it raised in 2023, drawn from a Save America nest egg that is nearly gone. So he's going to have to ramp up small dollar fundraising, get the RNC to come pay his bills, and that's why uh, Laura Trump has been floated to replace Ronna McDaniel. Uh, as head of the RNC, she promised to spend every penny on Trump. Gee, what a surprise. A little bit of nepotism uh, going on there if, if she happens to uh, become head of the RNC and to guarantee a steady cash flow for Trump in his legal uh, battles. And again, that, that's pretty much the only ways that he's going to be able to raise cash at this point. But there it is. Uh, Trump's nearly broke, um, and he's got more legal issues on the horizon. It ain't looking good. Once again, I just have to say, to play stupid games, uh, win stupid prizes.